Fuck. All right, that's we're rolling. Rolling. Planet B. Content Culture Podcast episode featuring Bobby Gray. I think there's there's an evolutionary need for people to sort of go against the grain. I think that like you know maybe people like us or whatever people in bands and, and artists, it's like comes natural, but it's like there's there's like a need for that to happen for the evolution of the of the consciousness of our species. Like we we need to have those people on the on the end of the bell curve to really like push the boundaries to like take us to the next paradigm so we can so we can progress. Otherwise we stagnate as a as a as a culture or as a species even. John Walker. It depends who we're giving you negative response. Not that the, some people, when I got all neg- negative response, it was from the quote establishment in yeah. the 60s, you know. So that's what you wanted, you know. But the people that came and liked it, they were laughing, they were like insane hippies that hated hippies, you know. That's because my movies were made to offend hippies. Yeah. Even though know, I was a liberal, you know, I looked like a hippie, you know, I was a yippie, but still, I was in that culture, sure. You know? So we made movies to offend the very people that came to see them in a humorous way and to test their limits. Michael Balaki. We're seeing everything in, uh, you know, as light, you know, and, but, but we've learned, if anything, like that, that there's all this gray matter and sure. matter. everything yeah. is, is not as it looks like on sure. tin, you know, until we figure that out. Other I mean, dimensions. Looking, even into radio, radio waves, you all of a sudden see all this other motion happening sure. that seems to be invisible, but there's, there's a lot of other things at work in the universe that we still have yet to discover. The world is full of redundant ideas, and I think the joy of creating music or expressing yourself isn't enough for a lot of people. They have to share it with people. Uh-huh. And it's becoming easier. And it's becoming that. easier. Yeah. And, and in a sense, it's becoming easier to be good. Uh-huh. Um, and there's arguably there's more talented musicians and performers living right now than there ever has been before. Like, I understand all those things, but I also think that like when you are contributing to a culture that welcomes everybody's contribution, you're bound to start getting contributions that are just kind of like substandard. Sure. In the spectrum of human behavior, there's always going to be people phoning it in. There's going to be people who are doing it to drive themselves and, and evolve and, and create something new and communicate and there's people who are doing it just to be part of something or to contribute to something they love or whatever but they just don't for whatever reason they're not gosh it's like this is such a can of worms because like what is creativity and what is validity of something like it's totally subjective every person sure. has a different opinion of that yeah, we can be fucking punk, we can cut our fucking chest up, we can do crazy visceral things that might scare society or old ladies who are fucking walking down the street, and especially when we walk down the street and scream that God is dead because he's fucking dead. Um, that might be something that's shocking, but I just feel like there's so much other ways that one can be punk, I feel, and make interventions to the same things that I feel like we've been trying to do, even in the bands that we were about, and and challenging, you know, uh, states, and challenging organized religion, and and challenging, you know, corporate capitalism, all those things, without having to endanger our bodies. My greatest fear is having a building collapse on me. My wife and I just had a son. We named him Wilder James Paul. He has very deep blue eyes. I believe he has lived 107 lives before this one. I am very, very, very nervous about him hearing my music. Marvin Atkins. Right now, there are probably 80 to 8,000 mini scenes of like, fucking glitch this and K-pop that and fucking what? Yeah. Back in the 80s, there was rock. Then there was punk. And then there was like goth, uh, uh, post-punk, yeah. new romantic. Then were fucking, but everybody was on the same page. So everybody was on the same page, turning the page. Now everybody's on a different page to, you know, if you're in a minivan with 10 people, you're like, hey, <laughs> what a great song. And you turn around because you listen to the radio and somebody else is in the back playing fucking some bullshit and somebody else is like, yeah, we're listening to something else. Yeah. Whereas back then, it, 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 it was when you know, Kennedy was shot. And people were like, oh, they were doing something. And these moments happened in mass media. 
Now everything's fragmented. Ben Wayman. There's a couple injuries I haven't at once. One was I split my head open on something. And so that was really insane because I got to see when people get staples, you know, it's like, oh, you get staples, it's a medical procedure, it's called staples. It's literally like a construction stapler. You know, and I was like, they're stapling seven staples in my skull. <laughs> And you hear it, like, ching, 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 ching. and the dude I was with fainted, he was watching, and he's like, oh, you know. It takes a while for all dinosaurs to die out. Sure. You know? I, yeah, totally. And that's why these days, I thought for a long time the dinosaurs were dying out, uh, and there's been evidently a bunch of little hatchlings. Uh, you know? It's the same thing with hip hop, same with everything I like. I, I just like shit that does new shit. I'm not a nostalgia dude. I mean, I'll listen to like Motown and stuff if I want nostalgia, but like anything new, like I want to hear something I haven't heard yet and then have me get excited. Same in cinema or anything. You just want to, oh fuck, progress. Yeah, sure, right? sure. It's like I, said, I know this is a tough time in the world, but like I can't believe people are afraid of progress. I mean, not most people we know, yeah. but wherever the fuck else in this country that they don't want us to progress. Yeah. It's like, no, that's what this is all about. Like, yeah. we're supposed to fucking move forward. Yeah, sure. But music too. Music should be moving forward. Like, I don't want it stuck. Yeah. I want it, you know, I back, I, I swear, I get in all the time because I'm older, like, get in these music schools or some shit and there's always the old dudes going, oh, these new kids put on YouTube and learn how to play. I had to do it on a record. Like, fuck you. Like, yeah. They got the tech, they have the new technology. Yeah. Let them, they're going to get, they're going to create new shit yeah. that you would have never come across oh, yeah. on a fucking vinyl. Adam, you okay. I knew that if I told somebody that I do spoken word, they would immediately think of a certain yeah. awful version of it. Copy shot. Yeah, oh, all yeah. that type of stuff. And I didn't want anybody to think that way. And it was, a, I mean, maybe like you shouldn't have to think about that type of stuff. But I was like very conscious about not wanting people to think about it in a certain way. And so that's where I came up with Talking Songs, because I wanted it to be its own thing, and I didn't want people to think of coffee shop poetry bullshit. Jason and your whole band was there and everyone's like yeah he's parked in the car or whatever, whatever it was <laughs> and all of a sudden you like come up and you're like hold this and you hand me the youth of the day cupcake and you run off and i'm like holding this youth of the day cupcake wow that's pretty rad where did jason go and then this dude just comes like barreling through the crowd screaming like where the fuck is he you know and like, i was like dude and everyone's like oh there goes jason this seems about right <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, like <laughs> I was trying to park and I nicked, like the guy opened the door and I nicked his door and then he just started chasing me. Yeah. He was trying to actually kill me. Like he like tried to ram me in the car and then I parked and I started running and then he just got out of the car and started chasing me. And then I was like, I'm holding this like <laughs> youth today vegan youth of the day cupcake. I don't want to get ruined. <laughs> <laughs> then I ran into the club and then like yeah. had to change clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And remember, they kept like circling the block yeah. trying to like <laughs> recognize me. Travis Ryan. You know, everybody gets laughing. There's always that one guy in the band that doesn't get it, and you're like, oh, that's the person that you gotta get rid of. This yeah, get this guy out of here. <laughs> the, he's the merch guy. <laughs> and then you get out of the van at the gas station, and you're like, start talking <laughs> weird, you know, ling like, yeah, yeah. just like, just like, bust your lip. <laughs> well, I don't know how to say that, but like, <laughs> at this juncture, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Longmont's Ocean Castle. Is Gomez there? Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, no, I mean, uh, it's something that, like, people ask, don't you ever just want to, don't you ever just want to be more combative with people are cussing you out? And they're like, well, F you too, man. And it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> Have you ever ran into any problems? Like, has anyone found out who you were and, like, kicked your ass like they said they were going to? Oh, no. The KKK, they come into a rally or whatever. People should be joining in that rally, like putting on their fake buck teeth and playing banjos <laughs> and stuff like that, mock sodomizing their sisters and yeah. things like that, and making like they're part of that whole group and getting the pictures with them. And those guys, they'd be, you know, then they would go home and, you know, they wouldn't be saying, like, those fuckers came at us, and we, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you punch a Nazi, them. they're gonna just be even more of a Nazi. But like, I see that. But when I'm confronted by these guys, I often can't help but just be like, fuck you. Young Zing. Two months ago, is this like diner during Mexicali? And some dude just drove there, like 
Yeah. He took out of his car, but can kill like five people. Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. like, like, like drug cartel. Yeah. Uh -huh. you no, know, there's like young guys, like uh -huh. 22, uh -huh. 23 years, but they're like, like a, like a dealers, like okay. small dealers. Sure. Uh -huh. The the guy shot like um five person, and he killed three, and two were like mm. wounded. Wow. But it was like um. And a, a couple of friends were, were there. Uh -huh. You know, that's how we roll. Yeah. Like, and and then after that, a week after that, this like like guy from the government was eating in a in a restaurant, and then some dude came there and bam, he shot him. But uh -huh. he missed. He missed, he missed, he missed. Bob Marley. So music bad, plumbing good. <laughs> I don't know if music's bad. I, I don't have any. Well, career wise. <laughs> well, I would never tell anyone how to make a living, but just for me personally. I couldn't make a living doing music. Yeah, I don't think I just wasn't wasn't comfortable enough with all the like. I'm not even comfortable now, and you guys are <laughs> completely <laughs> great hosts. This is lovely, but it's it's weird talking about yourself, and that's all promoting your own music. Yes, yeah. It's like I felt like this, and but I was so sad that song, and it, this one's really important. <laughs> Those other three songs weren't. This one really mattered. You know, shit like that. It's like I. That's the song. That's what it's about. If you want to get into details, I can answer every question of why that lyric's in there. But I'm not going to, you know, you ask me. You listen to it. Tell me what it means to you. Sure. It doesn't matter what what I think it means because, you know, I wrote it. It's Once it's out of my hands, you guys tell me what it means. Well, it's art, subjective. and you can... Yeah. I mean, a lot of people over the years have completely misrepresented what I meant by this stuff, but they still like it, so I'm not going to tell them not to. Not to. Happens. You have to see things live because there's an energy in the room you can taste. You can't just go look it up on YouTube or uh, try to learn it off of a record. You got to see it live. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, for instance, learn that kickflip I was talking about on the skateboard. You know, you can't do a kickflip, but you see someone else do it, and it's like, oh, I see how they approached it, and maybe you're going to approach it differently, but uh, you can still take some influence from being in the room, catching the actual energy. Like, don't waste your time on YouTube all day when you could be out there living it. I think younger people are getting turned on by doing things in a much more like simple way. Like I know younger kids are getting four tracks, you know, even though it, it's like a trendy thing, it's like younger kids are into Polaroids and taking film and, you know, and, and writing things and creating things in a much more organic way. It is happening and, and I do believe that it's going to begin to create some really cool art soon in this, in this you know, like wake of, of electronics and, you know, which, which by no means am I against, but I think artistically young people have just been so like bug lamped by EDM and, and software that now it's kind of starting again where I'm seeing like rumblings of kids that are like picking up guitars and using four tracks and setting up shows and, and playing in practice spaces and I just I think that it's happening and I, and I think that we just maybe aren't as quite connected to it. Luke and Shaw. One technique I used when sampling was I would get the stereo cables from the mixer to the actual sampler and I would just do you know, weird stuff like I would get a thumbtack and stick it in either the left or the right cable and sometimes, you know, the left and right would just pop in and out or you would get these weird little glitchy sounds. So I would just sit around and mess with the cables and, you know, cut them, slice them and just to get weird sounds that no one else would be able to get. San Diego Black Panther Party. The original Black Panther Party years ago evolved into a very a political party when they realized that our struggle mirrored other marginalized groups struggle such as the senior citizens such as the american indians okay. yeah. such as the mexicans such as the poor whites in the appalachian mountains so basically our thoughts and our program started switching over to we need to unify with these other groups and we can all address our issues sure. before the government and the people of the world there was one time when Social Distortion played there and Mike Bass was super drugged out at the time, big junkie, so when they were good. It was Social Distortion, I think, a minute, man. Cops wanted to come in and shut the show. And Mike Bass and Joe Cushman were both involved because they wanted to come in and arrest Mike Bass. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, no, you got to wait till the show's going to be It'll surely be a riot yeah. if you guys come in now. So they all waited. Wow. And, you know, I gave word to the Mike Bass's guy and I said, hey, they're going to arrest him. You've sneaking out the back door, oh, yeah, wow. you know, when he's, when he's off stage. Yeah. And he came off stage and he was so wasted, he went out the wrong, different door on his own. Yeah. The cops were there and he handcuffed him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Colton Culture is proudly sponsored by Earthquaker Devices.